Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And I want to use this video to have a look at the right ascension and declination kind of coordinate system for telescopes and astronomy. And there's a few different sorts that you can have, but this particular one is going to relate to like the equatorial style mark that you might get on a telescope. So firstly, what is the astronomical coordinate system or what are they? Well, astronomical coordinate systems specify astronomical object positions relative to physical reference points available to an observer. What does that mean? Well, we're kind of on a planet that's moving against the background stars, so we need some reference point to essentially get positions of objects as we're moving around. And there's a few different ways to do that. We did a previous video on the altitude azimuth mount and this one's going to be about the right ascension and declination coordinate, basically. And it relates to the actual uh, celestial sphere that we kind of sit in. But anyway, the reference point is very important because the Earth is moving. If you've ever done a really nice star trail picture like this, this is kind of great. Obviously, it has a really great foreground picture as well with the telescopes. But you'll notice that the actual stars will follow a curved path and... You you obviously the Earth's rotating, so if you want to look at an object in the sky and you want to track it for some period of time or even find where it is, it's not going to be the same point every night at the same time, things like that, it does change. So we need to know how to point our telescope in the right part of the sky and this is where your coordinate systems come into play basically. So the equatorial system is the one that we're going to concern ourselves with for this particular video and you have two essential axes really on this or directions that you can move your telescope. And one of them is going to be the declination, and that is plus or minus 90 degrees. So probably first worth noting that the Earth sits inside this celestial sphere, and all of the stars, the astronomical objects, kind of project onto this celestial sphere, and the Earth moves around inside that. So those declination and the right ascension positions are essentially fixed to the background stars. We're just moving inside it. Now the right ascension, is actually between 0 and 24 hours where, where basically that's a full rotation so it's essentially between 0 and 360 degrees but it will be given in hours, minutes and seconds whereas declination will be in like degrees, minutes, seconds you'll have like arc seconds and that if you go kind of really small so that's how it's typically given and the declination is like the I suppose the altitude or the latitude so if you think about latitude and longitude on, a, on our planet, the Earth, then the declination is essentially like the latitude. You have a plus or minus 90 degrees there. And then we also have the right ascension, which is kind of like the longitude. But this time around, we're, we're basically doing it on the celestial sphere as opposed to the actual planet itself. Now, all of the objects in the sky will have some RA deck coordinate essentially on this celestial sphere. So if you have a look at a star chart, so there's an a, a example star chart here with some nice objects and you've got your constellations and stars. Maybe you've got one of these and you're looking for something, well they're all going to have an RA position and a declination position which does not change. That's its position on the celestial sphere and you can see along the bottom the RA, that's in hours and along the, the y-axis there, that's obviously in degrees and that's between zero and minus 50 actually for this particular one we have here. So yeah, as I mentioned before, the RA deck don't change as the Earth rotates. They are projected onto this celestial sphere which the Earth is rotating inside of. Now if we want to track an object with our telescope, with our equatorial mount, then we only need to move in the actual RA and not the declination. So what that basically means is we can mimic the rotation of the Earth. So as the object moves across the sky, if we've aligned it to our polar axis, so that depends on the latitude of the planet that we're on, the higher the latitude, then the higher the angle of the telescope. If we're at the, the North Pole or one of the poles, our telescope is going to point directly up because the rotation axis will be directly above us. Or the, sorry, I should say the, 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 yeah, the polar axis, the, the North Pole, polar star if we're in the northern hemisphere and then we only need to use the RA. If we go further down in latitude then it's the opposite, our telescope will actually come further down and at the equator then we'd actually be looking kind of quite low down essentially, um, right down on the horizon. So we only need to, to move this RA to match Earth's rotation. So as I mentioned before this is our celestial sphere and the Earth is moving inside that. 
So we just want to mimic the rotation of that or the movement of the Earth if we want to track an object. Now the benefit of using an equatorial mount is that if we track an object, let's, so this one here is the Andromeda Galaxy, we definitely get our object in the centre of our picture or in our field of view if we're watching it for a long period of time. With an altitude azimuth mount where you're basically going to have to move two axes at the same time, you get a field rotation. But here, with an equatorial mount, because you're only using or moving the right ascension to keep the, or to basically compensate for the movement of the Earth, then we don't get any field rotation. We get a nice kind of static image as the, as the Earth rotates. We can track it. We get a nice image like that. We can track it for hours and end if you've got a really good mount and tracking software and stuff. If we used this azimuth altitude mount, as I mentioned before, and again, I did a separate video on that where I explained it a little bit better. But you have to move both the azimuth and the altitude to track an object as it moves across the sky due to the Earth's rotation. You get a field rotation with that, unfortunately, which means if you want to do astrophotography, take pictures of objects over long periods of time, like the Andromeda Galaxy here, then the actual field itself rotates. Those objects around the outer part become blurred. Yes, you can keep the galaxy in the center of the image, but the actual whole image itself begins to rotate as you move around. And that's because you're using these two axes to keep the object tracked in your field of view. So that's the horizontal system, the altitude azimuth one, which again did a separate video on. But you're basically, you have an altitude between 0 and 90 degrees and an azimuth between 0 and 360, which is like the rotational direction and then an altitude above the horizon and you have to move both of those as the Earth rotates because the object will take a bit of a curved path as you saw previously and that's kind of the issue with this if you want to do long exposure photography and on the actual mount itself it would look a bit like this so you've got those two axes there the vertical movement positioning of the telescope is your altitude and then the rotational one is your azimuth there and again to track an object they both need to be moved now you can compensate for that, so instead of, if you don't have an equatorial mount and you just have that, like an altitude or azimuth altitude mount, you can just use a field rotator. It's something extra to buy, but it will rotate the camera at the right speed to compensate for that field rotation. So you can get away with it like that and not have an equatorial mount that's aligned to the polar axis. It doesn't really make that much sense if you've got your own telescope, you just get an equatorial mount and align it. But the bigger professional telescopes are just too big to have an equatorial mount. When they get to a certain size and you align it to the polar axis, the telescope has to kind of be leaning over to one side. And there's a lot of weight there. And engineering-wise and practicality means that we don't typically use the equatorial mounts for the big professional telescopes. Instead, they will use an azimuth altitude mount, so you're moving in two axes, but they will also then use a field derotator to mimic the motor, or not mimic, but to compensate for that rotation you get in the field because of it. So even the big telescopes don't really use equatorial mounts because they're just too big for that. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy or find them helpful, then do consider becoming a member of the channel. There's extra videos in the member section, but it also helps generally support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.